All right. Recording is on and you can start. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, my name is Abdullah Al-Tabi. I'm a, a PhD student at MIT. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about machine learning uh, for everyone. And uh, uh, the way, um, the reason that I picked this topic is uh, machine learning is, uh, is a very important topic and everyone talks about it. However, only few people actually know what they're talking about. Uh, so I'll try to clear a couple of misconceptions. Uh, this I'll, I'll do it with the, with the demo. So, so yeah, um, inshallah, you'll enjoy the ride. Uh, so uh, we'll, we're going to start with a very simple task. Nabi next to Bernamage, and the Bernamage is like um, the program is going to identify uh, images with dog in them, uh, dogs in them, and then images with cats. Uh, very simple task. Uh, however, uh, to make uh, the, the the problem much much simpler, um, we'll uh, we'll get a data set, and the data set has like uh, some uh, positive ones and some negative ones uh, labeled, and then uh, we want to pick just one point uh, that and uh, to separate the data, and 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 I'll show you that on on an illustration in the next slide. And then uh, the promise that we have on this data, particular data set, that there is actually such point that exists that separates the data into two different buckets uh, of data. So this is an example. Uh, so we have data uh, labeled with positive, and then we have another data that's labeled with negative. And then uh, um, uh, one um, separator that actually could separate the data is like picking zero. So if you pick zero as your separator point, so all the points here uh, on the on the right side, right hand side is going to be positive. Everything on the left hand side is, is negative. So either and the data Jadida Jet uh, data is like here, uh, it's going to be labeled positive. If it's labeled there, it's going to be negative. Uh, so um, so if you like, um, just like to illustrate the other point. So if you have data and then the, the new point that came in, in the data is 2.5, I would classify it as positive because it's um, over here with point, uh, five, negative point 0.5, it's going to be negative uh, according to our separator. And then, if, uh, and then we always have an issue. Oh, uh, is it better now? Uh, okay, is it better now? Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. So if um, if the point is uh, lies on the on the on the on the separator itself that we picked, then we have an issue. We don't know whether it's uh, it's positive or negative. Uh, just to keep to keep that in mind. I just want you to keep that in mind that sometimes we have issues where we just flip a coin and then we say, well, it, maybe it's positive, maybe it's negative. Um, so. Sometimes we have this issue where the data is actually is not separable in one dimension. What we mean is like this is the, the number line, and then uh, any point that we pick pick here, it's going to be misclassifying either one or three points. So if we pick a point here, all the points here will be uh, those two points will be misclassified. This point will be misclassified. If we pick here, uh, then this point will be misclassified because it's light. So the point is right here. So everything to the left of it is negative. So these, this is correct, this is correct, uh, and this is wrong. And then uh, the point here is, is right. Uh, so, so we go to the higher dimension. So when we go to 2D, which is basically the same uh, data that we just got, uh, then we see that um, the negative data here and then the positive data. And that there's like, uh, so in 2D, you can't separate the data with one point. You need two points. That's the 2D. And then the, if you put two points to separate the data, then you have a line, right? Um, so we use uh, what we learned in high school, which is the number line, uh, number equation, which is this one. Uh, we have a slope and then intercept. And then you know how, how you guys do it. However, we're going to use this uh, notation, which is the matrix notation. Uh, so uh, we can pick uh, these uh, two points. And then uh, I'm just making an animation here that there is like technically infinite um, number of, of lines that you can pick. 
And there is also another separator that goes uh, this way diagonally or this way or that way. Uh, there, so we need that separated data correctly. Um, uh, so there's like uh, using this data, you don't know which one is better. So let's go to the 3D uh, dimension. So 3D, we just add a, a Z component and then we add one more column. Uh, and then this is our 3D space. Um, and then in 3D, you, you no longer have a, a line, you need to pick three points. And then once you pick three points, then you have something called hyperplane. Think of hyperplane as a wall uh, that you have in space. So you can see that like we were, we picked this hyperplane and then we were able to separate the data, uh, the positive into one bucket and then the negative into another bucket. Um, we can go to 4D and, and, and beyond. Unfortunately, we live like in a 3D world, so we can't imagine uh, 4D uh, correctly. What we do is a hack, which is like 3D plus time, and time is like the fourth dimension, but you can go to the fifth and sixth dimension. So we can abstract all that by saying, well, any D that we have is just, uh, we need one more component, and then we need one more X in that dimension, and then all of them equal one D. Um, so let's um, let's into, uh, introduce our topic today, which is like called perceptron. And perceptron is an algorithm, uh, and the algorithm is basically will find the line or the point or the hyperplane for us. So if it's one D, uh, then it will find a point. If it's in two D, it will find the line, and then if it's n dimension, it will find the hyperplane for us. So perceptron will, will basically uh, is very easy to understand. We uh, we initialize m. The, the variables we're looking for, and also B. And then we go for um, iteration. I'll, I'll show you um, um, some like plots that shows you exactly what this is actually doing. Um, so we pick a point, uh, and then uh, X, and then we pick Y, and then we do this operation. And this operation is exactly that. Uh, this is written in code. This is written in math. Uh, and then we, we find the sign of it. Uh, we said like, if it, fly, if it flies on the right, it's gonna be positive. If it flies on the ne uh, left, it's gonna be uh, negative. So this function, numpy.sign, it will tell me whether it's z one or negative one or zero if it lies right on the, um, on the, on the separator. Um, and then we check. So if y, our correct label, is negative one and the sign we predicted is negative one, then this entire thing is going to be positive one and it's going to be more than zero. If y is one and then the sign is positive one, then the entire thing is going to be uh, more than zero. So this block of code will not be executed. However, if there is a mismatch, which means y is one, sign is negative one or vice versa, then we know that we made a mistake and then we need to update the separator. So the, our separator is no longer valid. So we need to update. it. And then the update is like, uh, is very intuitive. It's basically my current value plus uh, y times x and then the other one is b plus y. Um, I'll show you that in a better way. So remember our first example, uh, we have this data, and then we basically write the data into code, which is we have negative four, negative three, and negative four is, uh, is labeled a negative one, uh, negative three is labeled negative one, uh, and so on. And then you have three and four, and these are labeled positive one. Uh, we feed it perceptron and gives us uh, M of four, uh, and notice that it's one dimensional, and then B is negative four, uh, negative one, sorry. Uh, so when we plot actually the separator, we can see that it, it decided that this is the best separator to, to see, uh, to, to have. And then this line denotes where the positive lies on this separator. So anything to the right of it is, is positive. Anything to the left of it is going to be negative. So using this, we can say, well, if, a, if the point lie, any point that lies here is going to be positive. Any point that lie, that's going to lie here is negative. Uh, so let's do that in 2D. We have uh, this data, you guys remember it from second example, and then we use the same uh, perceptron algorithm and then it gave us zero to notice like the two dimensionality here. 
and then an array of negative uh, two uh, bias of uh, negative two. The B is negative two. Um, and then this is how it works. So this is the data as you see here, negatives, and then these these are the positive. And then the first separator is found is this separator. And then you know that like maiden state here and maiden state here. So it's going to update. Uh, so and then we shift it to that, and then it makes basically a, a lot of mistakes, and then it, it changes. And then here you can see that the minuses are here, and then the positives are here, and it's also a mistake. So it, it shifts it above, um, and then it, it knows that it made a mistake here, so it's going to update as well. And then it jumps over there, and then it says, like, oh, I did some, something horrible, let's update. And then uh, we say, like, hey, we made a mistake here, let's update. And then we say, oh, we made a mistake here as well. So we notice like we went back to step number two. So it's gonna uh, cycle again and then cycle. And then finally we, we, we achieve a separator on point, point five uh, that separates the data accurately. And then this is like the direction of the positive. So anything above the line is gonna be positive. Anything below the line is gonna be negative. Um, so in 3D, we use uh, the same thing. Notice like M, our M is ruled by one dimension. And this is our separator. This is our hyperplane now. And then uh, this is uh, our bias. Uh, I hope you guys got the idea. Um, so let's go back to our images. How many dimensions we have? Uh, we load an image, and then we resize it to 128 by 128. So we have 128 rows by 128 columns. Um, and then, so this particular pixel, so we have values in, in pixels. Uh, for every pixel, we have RGB, red, red green, blue. So we have 126 uh, red, 119 uh, green, and 113 blue values. And then, like, you go on, uh, on and on to, to color every pixel. However, it's like it's very complex uh, to, to do that. So we'll, we'll convert the data into grayscale. So we have, uh, so each pixel will have a val one value and the value is from zero to 255. And this is how we do it. It's like, it's very easy. So I wrote a function called the process image. Uh, all the, the code you guys see is actually executable and I'm, I'm running my slides using Jupyter Notebook. So the code here actually runs and all the demo here is actually true. Uh, and, and you can copy the code and then it will work for you. Uh, so how many dimensions we have? We have 128 times 128, that's 16,384. Uh, so let's try uh, Perceptron. Can Perceptron uh, train uh, and, and find a, a good separator for us? Let's do that. So we will load all the images. Uh, actually, we will load only 100 images. Uh, we have 12,000 uh, on each category, but we'll only pick 100. Uh, and then we, we will pick a, a label, and then the label is like either one or negative one. So if it's a cat, uh, I expect Perceptron to give me one. If it's a dog, I expect Perceptron to give me negative one. Uh, and then this is the labels, and the way is like, uh, so the D is this way, so this is 16,300. Uh, and 84, and then uh, the columns here are 10, but we have 100 actually, but I'm only displaying 10. Uh, so this is the first image. What do you guys see in this image? Yeah, it's obviously there's a dog in it, and then the second image there's a dog in it, and then third image there's a cat, and so on and so forth. There's also a cat here, uh, and then there's a dog in the last one, on the 10th one. Um, so we trained Perceptron and it gave us um, this um, uh, M, uh, and it's like 16,384, uh, 16, 16, and then this is our bias. And um, the, the assumption that we're going to make that this separator will find a cat in an image. Uh, so, um, like, I, I, most of you guys don't know me, so you don't trust me. Uh, so let's, uh, let's say this, uh, this is an image. So we, we, have, we, we clearly see a cat here, you know, uh, so we'll, we'll get the data. So we'll process the image. Uh, we got it from the test set. Uh, you notice that like we don't know uh, if there was a cat or a dog. 
So what we expect is when you use the M and the B, uh, we will see one. Uh, otherwise, it will give us negative one. So you can see clearly that the code actually gave us a one. And there is a cat in, in this image indeed. Uh, here we have a puppy, and the puppy is, is a dog. Uh, we open the image, um, and then we process it, and then we got negative one, and negative one is a dog. Um, uh, that, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the talk. Uh, any questions? Hello? Yeah, we're waiting uh, to see if there are any questions. Uh, there's a question. What is this technique called? Uh, it's called Perceptron. Uh, so Perceptron was invented in the eight, 1954. So it, this is not the, the greatest, the greatest like algorithm to use uh, to, into, like, uh, for predicting stuff. But this is very clear and very easy and intuitive to understand. And once you understand Perceptron, you can basically understand neural nets and all the uh, algorithms. But all the algorithms that uh, I studied are basically using some flavor of Perceptron. The math is basically the same. Uh, all of them are actually using, uh, they're trying to find the separator. Uh, uh, Perceptron finds uh, a linear separator. A linear separator means a point, a line, or hyperplane. Some other um, uh, variation will try to find uh, some nonlinear functions. Uh, so if you read that the uh, neural nets and stuff, they have a ReLU and uh, what, uh, the other one is uh, uh, sigmoid, and these are technically nonlinear functions. Uh, I can talk about them uh, offline. Uh, you still have 10 minutes, okay. and there are three questions for you. Okay, so, um, what are, uh, so researching subject at MIT. So I'm working on uh, something called federated learning, and federated learning is um, trying to um, combine privacy and machine learning. So uh, in a, like, um, how can I describe it? So think of, um, so actually, to talk about it, we need to talk about two things. Uh, so the <laughs> uh, more question for you. Uh, so there's something called machine. Uh, there's something called the wisdom of the crowd, and and the wisdom of the crowd is a nice concept. It uh, enables like societies actually to function, and the way we do it is like we say, hey, if we aggregate naively, so we say like, hey, we have ten people. Um, and then we want to find the, the truth. Uh, we say like, hey, everyone give me an answer and then we get 10 answers. And then the, the thesis that says like, it's like the, the truth lies in, in the middle. So what we do is like, we take them all and we add them up and then we average them and then we get the, the truth. Federated learning, what it does is basically says, uh, I have n number of uh, of devices or n number of users, and each user will have their own um, um, data set, uh, right? And then uh, they don't want to share the data set uh, across other uh, with other users. So what they do, like what I do, to, what I ask them to do is, hey, can you please train a like a perceptron, right? So train a perceptron on your data. Don't tell me what you're training on. Just tell me the M and the P. And then I get all the M's, so I have 10 M's and 10 B's, and then I average them. And uh, magic, the magic actually happens, which basically we, we get a, a, a better separator than any of them. Uh, and, and this is called the wisdom of the crowd. So wisdom of the crowd enables us to do federated learning. Um, and we're trying to basically build applications on that idea. Uh, I can take it offline. Uh, you can also talk to me on Twitter or find my email. Uh, and uh, take it offline. And there's my, another question. How depth of knowledge you need to have on linear algebra to learn machine learning? Uh, pretty much the stuff that I showed you. Uh, there's also, um, so linear algebra, like, uh, it sounds scary, but it's not. Uh, it's actually, li linear algebra is like, 
um, you know, like C and C++ are basically the same. Like math algebra that we learned in high school and linear algebra are basically the same. Uh, uh, unfortunately, like mathematicians are the worst people to name stuff. Uh, so they will say like a rank or something like uh, or system of equations and like it's like system of equations is like system of equations in, in algebra, which like you can't solve a problem unless you have the same number of uh, equations. So if you have uh, uh, you have three unknowns, three variables x, y, and z, you need to have three different um, uh, equations to find a unique x, a unique y, and a unique z. Um, and like linear algebra is like it does that for you. You don't need a lot of like depth, especially like with all these uh, frameworks right now. You have chaos. You have uh, chaos like talks to uh, TensorFlow and uh, TensorFlow and um, uh, Py, uh, PyTorch. Uh, so it does that automatically. You can see that like I, I wrote the code. Uh, so. This code right here is like written in NumPy, and NumPy is like it's abstracting a lot of like um, complexity when it comes to uh, matrix of uh, multiplication. Uh, so adopt project like you can do it on 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 hand, but like you can also do it here, which is like uh, mp dot dot project m transpose times x, uh, and that happens to work. Okay, last question we have is, can or should you change the bias if your data set exceeds a certain size? So, um, there is actually a trick that we use. Um, I, I didn't want to talk about it, uh, but I'll mention it here. So what we do is uh, we play with the, with the data, uh, right? So what we do, we actually shift the data into zero. Right. Uh, so what B does is basically it enables the line to basically flow or the hydroplane flow in 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 uh, in, uh, in in the two D or three D space. So what we do is we say, hey, all the data will be central around zero. And what we do it is uh, uh, we do uh, something called. Uh, so we, we find the mean. So you go find the mean, which is the average of all the data. And then for, for every point, you subtract it with that mean. And then you divide it by the standard deviation. And this is like a normal procedure that everyone does on uh, statistics. So you shift the, the data to be central around zero. And then once you do that, then you can have a separator that goes through the origin, right? Uh, but if your data is like scattered and it's not centered on zero, then you need the bias and the B to, to move on. And we call it the bias, but doesn't mean like bias against people, like, well, like how society thinks. It's like bias means uh, it's, it's going to be shifted to another like, number. Like I would call it a, a shift instead of a bias. But like, unfortunately, like we have... Um, 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 unfortunately, like mathematicians decided to call it a bias. Okay. And Thank you, Abdullah. Well. Thanks a lot, Abdurrahman. Thanks a lot, man. I uh, really appreciate it. Of course. Uh, and I know we're going to be here. It's a time zone. That's right. I'll stop the recording.